Well, hi, everybody. Happy almost New Year on the last Thursday of December 2021 as we get ready to welcome what has to be a happier New Year for all of us. It better be. Uh, and, and welcome to our Facebook Live Global Travel Update. Peter Greenberg here. And lots of things to get to on this uh, last Thursday of December. Uh, first of all, uh, flight delays and cancellations. You know the drill. Of course, while I'm talking about that, if you've got questions or things you want to discuss, just uh, you know, log them in here on our list, or you can always email me, peter at petergreenberg.com, with your name and phone number and question or problem. Or if we don't answer it today, it's on our New Year's radio show. That's right. Starts this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., our first show of 2022. I'll get used to saying that number, 2022. And, uh, of course, it's also a podcast available early next week. Lots of stuff to talk about. I said flight delays and cancellations. The key here is not the flight cancellations, folks. It's the flight delays. Take a look at the numbers. Averaging between 800 and 1,200 flight cancellations a day, but 7,000 flight delays a day. And where is that most importantly? In the intermediate airports, the airports where you connect. Because if that flight's delayed, you're spending the night at that airport. So it's one thing to have the flight canceled at your outbound airport. You can just go home. But midway through, hey, it's the chairs with that, that don't recline in the airport, if you know what I mean. So be careful here, because what the airlines are going to do tomorrow and Saturday, count on it. They're still not out of the woods yet. Uh, there's still staffing shortages that were there before it was compounded by COVID positive testing. What they're going to do is they're going to do a different kind of triage tomorrow and Saturday. Those are two days of, of this year that most people don't fly. Most people don't fly on New Year's Eve. Most people don't fly on New Year's Day. So you're going to see a huge number of cancellations and rebookings tomorrow and Saturday so that the airlines can hopefully get back on track for the humongous return day of Sunday. You know, the one thing you can say about every Christmas is people don't always leave on the same day like they do on Thanksgiving, right? The Wednesday before Turkey Day. They stagger their departures. But for some strange reason, it's like the butterflies coming back to Mexico. They all come back on the same day. And that's this coming Sunday. What the airlines are hoping to do is to get a stable set schedule for this Sunday, for a little trickle over on Monday, and then breathe deeply on Tuesday. Why? That's the start of the first quarter of 2022. In the travel industry, there are two weeks a year that have the designation as dead weeks. It's the week after Thanksgiving and it's the week after New Year's when everybody's just recovering and not flying anywhere. Traffic plummets, airfares plummet. To give you an idea, I talked about this earlier this week on CBS. If I were to make a reservation today, assuming I'd even get on the plane to go from New York to LA, the round trip ticket would be over $700. You know what it is on Tuesday? Round trip, 132. That's $66 each way. The cab ride from Manhattan to JFK is 71, right? Makes no sense, but it does indicate to you how many people are not flying. And here's the other you know, good news. That's going to stay the case through the end of March, early April. So it's a uh, unintended buyer's market, and uh, you can take advantage of it. Start booking that now. A little bit later, I'm going to talk to you about the real danger of the frequent flyer programs. But let's go back into uh, what I wanted to talk about as well today. We end this year with over 6,000 cases of reported unruly, disruptive, or downright violent airline passengers. It was the year of the duct tape, if you know what I mean. Uh, but I have to share with you one story. I mean, people will do anything to get thrown off planes these days. They will do anything to get banned. How about this? A Florida man was banned for life from United Airlines. What did he do? He came on the plane wearing lacy thong underwear as his face mask. Okay, so, so much for being the Victoria's Secret model. He's gone from United Airlines. Uh, I have another strange story to tell we, say with you later, but the bottom line is those cases are gonna be tried in many cases, January, February, March of 2022, and they're not going anywhere. Why? because we still have a mask mandate that's gonna be in place until at least March 18th of 2022. And we have the possibility of a vaccination mandate for getting on a plane. Now there's some precedent for this already. You cannot get on a plane in Canada without showing proof of vaccination. You can't get on one in Australia without showing proof of vaccination. And uh, now Australia, 
might not be first on your list for 2022 because it's been closed. In fact, let me refer you to one of my favorite photos of the year if you happen to be thinking of going to Australia. And there you have it. <laughs> Had to share that one. Okay, so much for innovation and design. Uh, rumor has it, April they're opening. We'll see. Speaking of openings, I know a number of you have been asking me for weeks about this information, and we literally could not get an answer. So I went to my friend Zahi Hawass, who's the chief supreme Egyptian Egyptologist, uh, and um, he, uh, he gave me a little bit of guidance on when they're going to open up the Grand Egyptian Museum. I was in the Grand Egyptian Museum as they were building it and already installing the artifacts three years ago. But it keeps on getting delayed, delayed, and delayed. The rumor is it's going to open up November 4th of 2022. Why? Because it's the 100th anniversary of the discovery of King Tut's tomb. Now, I hope they open up earlier than that, but that's the latest rumor if you want to plan your trip to Egypt. Okay, now, uh, I also want to encourage you to listen to our radio show this weekend because I call out two airlines that I happen to think have done a great job this year, both international carriers, by the way. In Europe, TAP, the airline of Portugal, they're back on track. They're flying to all their U.S. gateway cities now. Great bargains, great deals, brand new fleet of planes using Lisbon as a hub. I think they've done a great job. I'll be speaking to Christine Widener, the CEO, and an airline that has truly distinguished itself, and I call them the international airline of the year, it's Qatar, or Qatar, depending on how you want to pronounce them. I'll be talking with their CEO, Akbar al Bakr about how they were able to uh, weather the storms and even go above and beyond in terms of their routes, their service, and some flights that they did that nobody asked them to do that turned out to be great humanitarian flights. Uh, so uh, check out that interview and that conversation this Saturday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. If you can't find it in your a station in your market, no problem. Go right to our website, petergreenberg.com. We stream it live starting at 10.05 Eastern time every Saturday. A great way to start your New Year's, of, of course, if you're awake and sober by then. Uh, now, uh, I wanted to share one other thing. It has nothing to do with travel. But I, I, this, is, this comes out of the category of what were they thinking? As many of you know, I'm a volunteer fireman in New York. I've been a volunteer fireman since I'm 18. I'm active. I'm on duty three days a week, seven months a year. Listen to this story. You cannot make this up. It comes out of St. Clair County, Illinois. The Prairie DuPont Volunteer Fire Department named Jerame Simmons, get risk, their new acting fire chief. One small problem. He's a convicted arsonist. 10 of the department's 13 firefighters resigned on the spot in protest, as they should. I mean, whoa, had to share that one. Okay, now let's get into what I want to talk about, about what you're going to do for 2022. And it's important. Uh, you know, the airlines realized one thing, if they realized anything at all, as they tried to raise capital in 2020 and 2021. What did they realize? Where were they gonna get money? What did they have on the airline that actually had value that they that could market? Turned out to be it's free, their frequent flyer programs. In fact, they soon realized that their frequent flyer programs are worth more than the airlines themselves. Think I'm kidding? American valued its frequent flyer program, the Advantage program at $34 billion. Delta and United were right behind them, and each of these airlines ended up mortgaging those programs and getting in cash between six and ten billion dollars each. Powerful, right? One small problem. That's a lot of debt. How are they going to deal with that? Well, one of the ways they're going to deal with it, and they've been doing this a long time now, but now it's going to really ramp up, is devaluing your miles. At the same time, making it harder to earn them and harder to redeem them. It's a trifecta of pain. And they can do that. There is no federal mandate that requires them to, uh, to adhere by any other rules. They make their own rules. And as I've told you before on this program, your miles do not accrue interest. It's not a bank account. I don't trust the airlines as airlines. Why would I trust them as banks? This is the time. When I finish talking today, run, do not walk. And if you've got frequent flyer miles lying around, and there are a lot of them, 
You know how many unredeemed frequent flyer miles there are right now that are eligible to be redeemed that haven't been redeemed, either because you didn't get around to doing it or the airline simply made it too tough? Fasten your seatbelt. 23 trillion. All right, am I getting your attention? And they're going to be devalued every single week starting in 2022, meaning the eligibility levels to be able to redeem a certain amount of, of miles for an award will change. They'll cost you more miles. You will no longer earn miles based on how much you flew. It'll be based on how much you spend. This has been going on for a while. The airlines are almost all now part of a fare-based program. In the old days, if I flew 2,400 miles between New York to LA, even on a discounted ticket, at least I got a minimum of 2,400 miles. That's gone. Now, if I'm on a discounted ticket, I only get maybe 400 miles. You have to fly full fare almost to get the full mileage. And that's just the difficulty of earning the miles. Now you got to redeem them. Well, during the pandemic, you could have redeemed them for anywhere. There's a huge amount of, of availability and inventory on almost the entire route system of every airline. Now that's not necessarily the case as either the airlines pare down schedules or more people are flying. So spend the next couple of days before we enter 2022 looking at your account and figuring out where in the next 330 days you want to go. And don't just pick Paris, because everybody picks Paris. And don't just pick Hawaii, because everybody picks Hawaii. Pick a place that none of your friends want to go to, because you don't want to go with them anyway. And redeem the miles at a reasonable mileage redemption level for flights that actually may be available. Because starting in January, the airlines have gone to dynamic pricing on this. You won't even be able to look at a chart to figure out what you need. It's going to change by the hour. And none of it benefits you. Trust me on this. Now, I'm not telling you you should all redeem your miles for Des Moines, Iowa, just for the sake of redeeming miles. Pick a place you actually want to go to. And if you're watching me in Des Moines, Iowa, I meant no harm by that. You get the point, though, right? Go to your wish list or make up a new one. Burn the old bucket list. Get an atlas. Pick something at random. Just don't let your miles sit in your account. They are going to be devalued. So don't come crying to me in February when you're, when you're either short of miles because they changed the levels or you can't get a seat because they made it impossible. Now's the time to do it before everybody wakes up. All right, we've had that conversation now. Now, let's uh, let's go to your some of your questions. I'm gonna scroll down here. Okay, Patrick says, greetings from New York City. Hey, he made it back east. Jew is saying greetings from Japan. Roseanne, hello from Palm Beach. Lynn Muciano, Muciano. Yes, we love you, Lynn. Melissa, from snowy Reno. Okay. Uh, Matthew says, any recommendations for hotels in Ottawa? Uh, my favorite, the Albert at Bay, has been converted into condos. Well, look at the Fairmont. Fairmont might work for you there. Um, ah, Colleen loves the figurines standing behind my head. Anybody want to tell me what they are and where they're from and their significance? There's a question I want to, I want to throw out there. Uh, by the way, I asked everybody to send in what they thought their nominations were for their craziest travel stories of 2021, beyond just the, the passengers getting duct taped. Most people said it was delays and cancellations. Guess what, guys? Those aren't crazy stories. Those are regular stories. Welcome to the real world. Um, and, and all of you just sent in stories about how you got your flights were delayed or canceled. That's not crazy. That's unacceptable, but it's not crazy. Okay, let me give you some crazy. A 16-year-old boy was found alive in, back in February of 2021 after stowing away in the landing gear of an aircraft from Nairobi to Holland. That's a 4,800-mile journey, and he lived. We saw another guy from Guatemala do it in Miami just three weeks ago, and we have video to show it. I mean, it's, I mean, you check it out on YouTube. It's unreal. No one is supposed to survive those flights. The wheel well is not pressurized. Um, all right, Quant May 21. This will give you an idea of pent-up demand and how it's in our cultural DNA to travel. Qantas in Australia offered a flight to nowhere for any Australian residents to look at the May supermoon and a full lunar eclipse at over 40,000 feet. The flight was sold out in two and a half minutes. People want to get away. Uh, okay, this one, I actually published this on our newsletter. It was a photograph taken by a fellow passenger. From the, from the area of you cannot make this up, a passenger was sitting in the middle seat in coach 
with a fully operational sewing machine on the tray table, and he was like making drapes. It was working. And the funny thing about that picture, that it was actually a video, is that nobody seemed to mind. It was sort of like, oh, yeah, this happens on this flight all the time. Okay. Uh, we know about the duct tape in, in August of 2021 on the Frontier flight. And uh, this one will also give you an idea about interesting demand or lack thereof. How many, how many people visited Bali in 2019? Anybody want to guess? It's about 3 million. How many people visited Bali uh, in 2021? This comes from their resources. I'm not making this number up. 45 people. Think people are hurting? You better believe it. All right, let's go back to some more comments here. Uh, okay, how, California Historic Route 66. Uh, okay, Scott wants to know, what does my crystal ball say about going to Italy via London next fall? You're going. Was that easy enough for you? Uh, greetings from Denver, from Evelyn, and Robin saying hello from Williamsburg, Virginia, and wishing everybody a new, safe, and happy new year and healthy new year. I wish you not a happy new year, everybody. I wish you a happier new year. Uh, I learned a long time ago that if your goal in life is to be happy, uh, and my dad told me this, he was a doctor, he said most people who are happy all the time are mentally challenged. I believe him. So my goal in life isn't to be happy. It's just to be happier. And I hope you share that. Uh, okay, Roseanne says, airlines have no crew. Omicron is affecting everyone. And those that work for airlines must have a positive test or they, or, uh, or they can't fly. Uh, even if they know that family is positive, therefore whoever is flying with them gets infected, dominoes effect. Also, I know for a fact that positive passengers are flying home. They need testing to be implemented to fly. Okay, here's the deal. And I hope that you take this in the spirit that I'm giving it to you. Vaccinations have taken hospitalization and death off the table if you've been vaccinated. If you take a look at the huge spike in cases in Holland, the Netherlands, in Austria, in Israel, in, uh, um, in Switzerland, in Sweden, what a surprise. All those cases, many of them in the hospital, many of them dying are folks who were never vaccinated. How many friends do you know? How many friends do I know who got their two vaccinations, who got their booster, and they still got a breakthrough case? How many of those people ended up in the hospital that I know of, that you know of? My number starts with a Z and ends with an O. It's zero. They had mild cases for three or four days, tested negative, they're done. So the good news here, and there is some good news, is as we enter the next year, just in three days or two days, we're going to find out based on just the numbers alone, that COVID, while it can't necessarily be eradicated, it can be managed. That's our goal. That's our goal to live our lives and to manage this. The question is how well we can manage it, how fast we can manage it, how sensitively we can manage it. And one of the ways we do that, here's a news bulletin, is get vaccinated. Which brings up a point that Roseanne was asking. Will there be vaccine mandates to get on a plane? right? You got to show your vaccination card to go to a restaurant in New York. Why shouldn't you be able to force yourself to show this vaccine card or proof of vaccination to get on an airplane? Well, there's precedent for this. Can't do it in Canada without that proof. Can't get on a plane in Australia without that proof. What's going to happen here? Well, when I talk to airline CEOs, they will tell me privately, never publicly, that they cannot wait to have that mandate. It would make their lives so much easier. But no one airline CEO wants to be the first airline to announce this because of litigation, inevitably, and because they, want, they don't want to lose market share. So they're hoping that the Biden administration will do it. Here's the problem there. Right now, the Biden administration's vaccine mandate for companies above 100, 100 personnel is being challenged in the courts and is going all the way to the Supreme Court. So until that's litigated and resolved, it's not going to happen. But my guess is by March or April, someone's going to do it, and that's a plus. I mean, for example, if I want to go from New York to Chicago on American United or Delta, and one of those airlines is requiring proof of vaccination, I'm picking that airline. 
I'm not exercising my so-called constitutional rights to go on an airline with people I don't even know who they are. No, I'm going to pick that airline. So one of these airlines is going to get bold. Maybe not an airline based in a red state. Are you listening, Delta? Are you listening, Southwest? My guess is it won't be those airlines, but they will have to follow suit one way or the other, just like we changed the smoking rules in this country many, many years ago. Anyway, thank you for your comments, Roseanne. I appreciate that. Uh, and Betty is saying her flights to Cancun in March keep going down too in fares. They will. Between January and April, it's going to be a buyer's market. Uh, okay, Cordelia wants to know, would, would I think it's a good idea to purchase a ticket to Orlando for June now or wait until February or March? When in June? If it's after June 15th, book it now. If it's before June 15th, wait till the end of next month, early February, okay? Uh, Evelyn says JetBlue just announced flight reduction through January 13th. Guess what? Lufthansa just canceled 33,000 flights in Europe through the end of next month. Why? Because nobody was traveling anyway. It wasn't because people were becoming infected, because nobody was getting on the planes. The best time to cancel flights is when nobody's flying. That's why JetBlue is doing that. And by the way, Americans already pulled out of 26 cities. United and Delta's pulled out of 10 or 11 or making some of their routes seasonal only. This will continue for a while. All right, Sharon says, I'm traveling on a cruise in March from Fort Lauderdale to the Caribbean. We are driving across the U.S. to get there. We have to have a COVID-19 test, COVID test before you board, of course. And how long before we get the results? Oh, that's easy. You're probably going to have to do a PCR test, not a rapid antigen test at that point. And you're going to have to wait probably eight hours, maybe six. It's not like the 40-minute result. So plan accordingly. And you know you're going to get tested on the ship and probably one more time before you leave to comply with U.S. rules on that 24-hour rule. Okay. Uh, okay, Mia's watching from Irvine, California. All right. Uh, Catalina says, I flew from Spirit. I flew on Spirit from Columbia, and they took two hours to unload my luggage at the Miami airport. It made me late for my connection, so I had to spend the night there. Can I get back what I paid for the hotel from Spirit? Uh, no, you can't. It's called interlining. Let me make a guess, Catalina. You flew Columbia to Florida on Spirit, and you were connecting to another airline that has no affiliation at all with Spirit. Am I right? Or if you were connecting with Spirit, you might have some rights. So let me know. Okay. Uh, Mary says, hello from Michigan. Thanks for the frequent flyer program information. I'm going to redeem them now. Yeah, but do it sensibly, right? When you redeem your flights, don't spend 25,000 miles on a ticket. Remember I said that it's going to be a buyer's market between January and April. So when you go to redeem your miles, whatever you do, don't spend 25,000 miles on a ticket. It's only going to cost you $179. Redeem it for an international flight that's that would normally go for $1,500 or $2,000. And keep in mind that even if you do that and the flight gets canceled, you get to redeposit your miles. Okay? Uh, Cindy says, please don't pick Hawaii. <laughs> okay, I hear you. Uh, Mary says, conflicted whether to stick to Viking cruises to Petersburg and Moscow in September, considering military issues with Ukraine, expect Viking will cancel if unsafe. You know what? Don't cancel anything. Biden's talking to Putin today. At the end of the day, no one's invading Ukraine. Everybody's rattling the cage right now. All right? What's going to happen here is not military, but economic. And there will be an accommodation. That's my unsolicited uh, intuitive response. And even if I'm wrong, no need for you to cancel a cruise in September now. Wait. Okay. And uh, and Mike Mike is actually correct. Mike says St. Petersburg is on the opposite side of the continent. Nothing to do with Ukraine. He's absolutely right. So there you go. Uh, Willie says, greetings from Denver. I'm headed down to New Orleans in a few days. Looking forward to it. Well, thank you for sharing that, Willie. Uh, okay. Uh, Catalina says, why is it that airlines that are broke like TAP Portugal and Eastern keep selling tickets, they keep defrauding people with flight cancellations and not refunding tickets. Okay, stop right there. TAP is doing fine. Eastern is essentially a charter carrier, not the Eastern Airlines that we remember. And if you're buying your ticket on a credit card, you're protected. Remember, even TAP is obligated to refund your money if they cancel if your flight originated in the United States. It's under a DOT rule. And my understanding from them is they're writing those refunds if they have to cancel. Okay. Uh, ah, Colleen says, 
Our two trips nonstop from San Francisco to Frankfurt for next year are booked with 60,000 miles for each trip. No miles left with all of our international flights for 2022 are booked and able to be changed if necessary. She did it. Colleen, congratulations. Okay. And uh, one person's guessing behind me is Chinese Buddhist men. Not quite. Keep guessing. Ah, Miss Morales is saying Happy New Year from Sedona, Arizona. Uh, okay. Julie wants to know, can you pr review protocol of testing positive for COVID-19 in Spain? Wait until you test negative or on your 11th day after testing positive. Okay. If you test positive, there's a 10-day quarantine. Nobody other than the U.S. is following the reduced five-day quarantine period that has been recommended by the CDC. They're all at the 10-day mark. A good friend of mine, Chris Sloan, just tested positive in St. Saint, in Saint, uh, Lucia, and he was there for 10 days. And at the 10th day, he tested negative. He can come home. Same rule in Spain. Um, oh, Gail loved my joke that I posted on Facebook yesterday. I'll tell you the joke. It's, uh, did you ever wake up in the morning, turn to the person sleeping next to you, and kiss them and tell you how glad it was for you to feel alive and in love? Well, I did that this morning, and I'll no longer be allowed back on that airline. That was the joke. Okay. Um, do I ever bring your family along to your trips? Well, my family is my wife, and I don't go anywhere without her. So that's your answer. And boy, am I happy she's with me. Trust me. Uh, okay. Uh, ah, Gary wants to know if I'm going to do a top 10 travel resolution show for the new year. I will a week from today. Okay. Uh Here's one from our good friend, Captain Jonathan Atkin, also a great photographer. Just talked to the dancer I know aboard MSC Virtuoso. A dancer you know. Good. I, yeah, I'm buying that. Uh, and she's in Doha and then at the United Arab Emirates. Performers are not allowed off the ship. That's not a surprise. Remember, crew members are under a different protocol on many of these ships. They're in a bubble, right? They all have to be vaccinated, but nobody wants to take any risks. Uh, Okay. Ah, going to Portugal in May. Any tips? Ramy? we love you, Ramy. I want to see you one of these days. Ramy and I were our partners in crime from the old days of the home show with Gary Collins and Sarah Purcell. Those were great days. Uh, you know what? Email me next month and I'll give you some specific advice about Portugal in May, but you're going to be fine. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Harriet and Jim, will we be able to travel to Munich in March? My guess is you will. Look, we're going through a little bit of hysteria now and understood hysteria. I'm not questioning it about the Omicron. We, we still need to have more information about a variant that is so transmissible. But at the same time, if you're vaccinated, is not resulting in hospitalizations and death. And by March 2022, public health authorities will be able to come up with different protocols that will allow you to manage all this and travel a little more freely. That's my crystal ball guess. Okay. Uh, okay, Karen wants to know, Finland and Sweden in four weeks? Sweden might be tough. They're still banning everybody. Finland will probably open up. Okay, Karen says, I've got 300,000 frequent flyer miles. So, we, so you are saying we need to schedule our miles before January 1. Or could I wait until the first week of January? Yeah, you can wait until the first week of January. This is not happening overnight. But what the airline's going to do is on a daily basis, there's going to be a steady stream of devaluation, a devaluation parade on your miles. The longer you wait, the less valuable they're going to be. And even if they weren't less valuable, the less the inventory will be on planes with seats that you'd want to redeem your miles for. That's what I'm saying. Okay? So don't wait too long. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, Gail Huber has a, uh, a memorable travel story. When we were in Italy in 2016 and our airline Lufthansa went out on strike two days before our return flight, we were in panic mode. The travel agent was scrambling to get us home. Turned out they settled the strike the day before we left. So panic was over, but I think we aged 10 years in 24 hours. Welcome to the world of travel. Okay. Uh, Kaj is saying, I did princess cruises in 2012. Helsinki, St. Petersburg, visa-free. Uh, what the rules are in Finland and Russia, but Gulf of Finland is frozen solid and the spring should be okay. Okay. I have no idea what you're suggesting, Kaj, but thank you for checking in. Uh, 
Okay. Let's see. Carmen says, thank you. You're welcome, Carmen. Uh, ah, not a good news here from Bill. Bill Holmes says, an announcement on Air France's website states that they are resuming change fees beginning in February. I guess they didn't get the memo from all those U.S. airlines saying they were getting rid of them forever. Do you remember the United Airlines announcement? We're getting rid of draconian ticket change fees forever. They said it. So let's see what happens. Apparently, Air France wasn't part of that email chain. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm keeping going. Ah. All right, Carrie, I got your message. Let's do that on Monday. Give me a call. All right. Uh, ah, Gail has Gail has a chance to, to win nothing, but she's right. Are the statues Thailand Buddhas? They are. What many of you don't know is that for 25 years, I also had a house in Thailand. And uh, most of my house is furnished with antiques. And uh, I played by the rules. I never took anything out of the country without getting an approval from the Ministry of Culture so that I was not damaging or raping their cultural heritage. And these are beautiful. I have a number of them around the house and uh, it's it's serenity in motion. It's it's the best. Uh, okay. Ann Cooper says, I took your advice and used my frequent flyer miles to book a trip to Belize. Unfortunately, the connecting flight is 45 minutes, not possible from a domestic terminal to an international terminal. That's true. I can't get anyone on the phone to change the first leg of the flight from my hometown. Okay. What you didn't tell me, Ann, is which airline. Tell me which airline, I'll help you out. Okay. Uh, okay, Joan says, hello from rainy Oakland. Actually, rainy California. Uh, okay. You are still good for, for April in Paris, on, on, on uh, in France. Okay, I hope that's helpful to you, Tom. Um, Ah, Mike says, why did you book the flight when you knew the connection was only 45 minutes? Let me get into that. Mike, you raise a very interesting point. Forgetting even international connections. When you go online to make a reservation, and by the way, I do not make reservations online. I research online. I try to make my reservations with a human being. Because when you make your reservations online, what happens? The first fare that pops up seems like a great fare. You find out later it's that dreaded basic economy fare. The only people who should be using that are people in the witness relocation program or people who are literally fugitives from justice, okay? So already you're, you're looking at a very heavily restricted fare. And since so many of us connect on our flights, what's the next thing you don't see because you're not looking for it? The connect time. I've seen connect times in Miami going from like terminal A to terminal H right, at 33 minutes. That's suicidal. You need to give yourself, in the best of circumstances, a 90-minute connect time, especially these days when all the flights are full. Because if your first flight's late and you miss that second flight, even if the airline wants to put you on their next available flight, it's not available because it's already full. The rule is 90. Overseas, it's, it's more than that. Overseas, I would give yourself three hours. But in certain locations, like Heathrow, and this is what they never tell you, give yourself four. Why? Little known fact. The minimum legal connect time for flights in Heathrow is supposed to be three hours for passengers. You know what it is for luggage? It's four hours. Somebody's not doing the math. Do you want to get there with your bags? Give yourself four hours. Okay? All right. Uh, here's one from Richard. It says, I booked... Online, an eight-day Carnival Eastern Caribbean cruise out of Galveston on January 29th. We would like to cancel or reschedule for a later date in 22, 2022. I don't want a cruise if ports get closed. Okay. Will Carnival allow us to make a stick to the 29th date? They're doing this on a case-by-case -case basis, but let me remind all of you who are booking a cruise now or in the future that in your contract of carriage, the cruise line is, has the ultimate right. It reserves that right to either cancel or substitute ports based on what they would call force majeure or acts of God. COVID-19 comes into play here because there are incidents up, up beyond its control if a port will not let a ship dock if they have one or two COVID cases on board. We saw that happen last week. We saw that happen this week. So here's the key. 
why don't you wait? Have a conversation with Carnival now or your travel agent, but wait until you get a little bit closer to January 29th to see what's going on. Because if they cancel first, it's better for you. Any way you look at it. Same thing with an airline. You cancel it, different set of protocols come in. They cancel it, your rights are increased. So just hang tight. Okay. Uh, ah, Sean liked my answer about my wife. It's absolutely true. You know what? I traveled solo almost my entire life. Then I got lucky. I met my wife. I will not go anywhere without her. By the way, that includes the kitchen, the dining room, and the bedroom. Uh, okay, do they still have the travel trade show, but the one that is not open to the public, haven't heard of it lately? Uh, well, there is the, the former New York Times travel show, which the New York Times is no longer involved in. There will be a travel and adventure show at the Javits Center this year on the same dates. And there is one day before that, which is a travel trade day, which is the Friday before the consumer show. So Friday is the trade day. I think it's the last Friday of January. And then there's a consumer day, Saturday and Sunday. I will be speaking both of those days, and I hope you guys will come. Uh, okay. Ah, all right. Uh, uh, Georgie, I got your, your note. I will get back to you. Ah, here we go. Oh, now Jonathan is trying to admit or explain how he knows dancers. I love this. Uh, before doing aerial photographs, I photographed most of the major dance companies and their dancers for 15 years for the New York Times and Smithsonian Magazine. I have stayed in touch with dozens of dancers. Yes, Your Honor, I, I plead my case to the court. <laughs> Thank you for the explanation, Captain. Uh, what's up with Tanzania? Uh, okay. Well, I'll tell you what's up with, with Tanzania. I just got back. Put it in your calendars, everybody. You'll see more about this later on. April 21st, check your local stations for actual times. But that's the premiere of my next royal tour on PBS with the president of Tanzania, Samia Suluhu Hassan. An amazing story. Uh, the first woman of color and a Muslim to actually run a country of 60 million people. She has a remarkable story. And she's my personal tour guide as we continue the series of royal tour specials on PBS. Amazon Prime and Apple TV Plus. So that look for it April 21st on PBS. Uh, okay. Uh, any travel methods or carriers you are avoiding due to COVID? No, I'm still traveling. I'm just playing by the rules. Uh, ah, do I think travel to Antarctica is possible at the end of January 2022? Not only is it possible, it's going on. Uh, many of my friends are down there right now. The season ends around the 15th of February. You can now fly down there as opposed to just going through the Drake Passage, otherwise known as the Drake Shakes. But uh, yeah, you can go. Uh, okay. Mary says, I'm visiting my son in France in February. Should we rent a car to see Nice uh, and Montpellier or stick to train travel? You know what? I would stick to train travel. I love the, the trains in Europe, and uh, they're mostly on time, and uh, I've never had a problem. Uh, okay. Okay. Ann Cooper says, Delta from MGM to Atlanta. Well, MGM, of course, means Birmingham. Um, and uh, I don't know why you're asking that question, Ann, but let me know. Uh, okay. Uh, Barbara says, we have a Baltic cruise set for May, and it includes St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, what is it? What are your thoughts on still doing this? I would still do it. Uh, Joy says, I bought round-trip airfare from, from American uh, for the holidays from Georgia to Atlanta. From Georgia to Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta's in Georgia. Are you talking about Russian Georgia? Tell me more. Uh, Pamela says, hi, from Silverdale. Judy says, uh, cruise travel should be avoided despite vaccine status. The CDC said that. Listen, I'm not going to go mano a mano with the CDC. There are 89 cruise ships right now that are reporting at least one case of COVID. But let me give you the numbers. The, the most number of cases reported on one of the RCCL sh ships was about 48 cases. There were nearly 5,000 people on that ship. That's less than 1%. You do worse in Cleveland. And these are all breakthrough cases. So look, consult your doctor, not me. But right now, if I were to go on a cruise, I would do so without hesitation as long as 
My doctor told me it was okay. Everybody on the ship, crew, officers, and passengers were vaccinated, and they did testing, not to mention contact tracing if there's a case. The word that I'm a little bit upset about that's being used in the media right now is outbreak. 1% cases on a ship of nearly 5,000 people is not an outbreak. It's a number of cases that are being tightly controlled, isolated, and quarantined. So there's a thought there. Now, if this changes, you bet I'll let you know, okay? Uh, all right, I'm looking here. Okay, I'm still going on. Lynn, thank you for that nice note. Uh, Robin, how long have you been married to your bride? <laughs> well, my biggest, my biggest regret is that we didn't meet many years earlier. That's how strong this marriage is. Uh, we've only been married two and a half years. My first marriage, her first marriage, and our last marriage. Uh, Jonathan is not saying thank you, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, ah, okay. I hear what you're saying now, Ann. Your, your 45 minute connection was from Montgomery. Oh, you mean from Atlanta to get to Montgomery? Okay, that ain't gonna work because it, you're gonna be flying a regional jet from Atlanta to Montgomery in a completely different terminal. Gotta take those trains. I wouldn't chance it. Uh, and if it's, if it's Montgomery uh, going from Atlanta, that's probably Delta. So email me, peter at petergreenberg.com. Give me the specifics of your flight, your flight reservation number, all the details, and let me see what I can do, okay? Uh, ah, Ben says, I'm, I'm a Tanzanian, and I'm so happy, blah, blah, blah. Oh, he's, he's been some of our, he's seen some of our other royal tours. Thank you so much. And uh, yep, you know what? Caribou and Asante to you, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Bob Regal wants to know if I'm going to Cambodia. Well, Cambodia just recently opened. And uh, remember, this is, the, this is the country that had the most draconian entry requirements during the pandemic. You not only had to, you know, test, quarantine and everything, you had to put up like a $3,000 deposit in cash to pay for your funeral. How do you say welcome in Cambodian? Apparently not that way, uh, but now they're open. Uh, all right. Uh, Pamela says she was on an Emerald Princess cruise to the Panama Canal, which ended the 19th, just a couple of days ago. Lost one port, Turks and Caicos, but got an extra in Cartagena. The ship was fully vaccinated and didn't hear of any cases. And there you go. Uh, okay, what kind of face covering is best on a plane? I'm still using the N95s. Uh, all right. Thank you, uh, Mike, for that note about uh, outbreak. Uh, Terry Pierce, Happy New Year. Right back to you, Terry. Uh, ah, Joy says, trip from Atlanta to Florida. Can I get my money back from the airlines if they're still backlogged when I return home January 4th? I don't understand your question. If you're returning home on the airline, that means you've completed your journey. Tell me more, Joy. Uh, hello from Boynton Beach. Hello, Debbie. And Ann Cooper says, thank you, sir. Thank you, Ann. Uh, okay. And Fakiro says, welcome to India. Can't wait to get back there. Uh, here's one from Angela. Just got off of RCCL Mariner. There were 2,800 on board and about 15 that we heard positive by day four felt very safe. 15 out of 2,800? Hey, pipe me aboard. I'm there. Uh, okay. There you go. Now it's time for our photo of the week. Let's put it up. What a beautiful photo this is. I always love sunset shots. You always got to get a bird in there. Can anybody tell me where this is? It was taken, by the way, by Melissa Swanson. Any guesses? No one's going to get this. Here it comes. Esaura, Esauria, excuse me, Morocco. Yep, a, a late 18th century fortified town. One of her favorite places when she visited Morocco. And uh, in the distance there in the back is the island of Mogador. In fact, that's Mogador Bay. And uh, the caravans used to use that as a port for years. A lot of history there. Melissa, congratulations on your photo for 2021. That's our last photo of the week for 2021. But if you've got a candidate for one, you know the drill. 
just email me to peter at petergreenberg.com. And if we like it, you're on the air with it. Melissa, thank you for that. And uh, for those of you who have not been to Morocco, it's well worth it. Okay, here's one from Sue. When did Tanganyika and Zanzibar merged? That was 1964. And they merged. By the way, people forget that, that Zanzibar was run by the Sultan of Oman back then. Tanganyika was run by the Germans and everybody else, the Portuguese, the Arabs. They all came in. Finally, the uh, Tanganyika got its independence in 61. In 64, Zanzibar got theirs. And they merged to form from Tanganyika and Zanzibar, Tanzania. And there you have it. Uh, what is the, uh, Alan says, what is the percentage of hotels that have closed due to the pandemic in New York and New Jersey? How many new ones are opening up in 2022? Well, it depends on when you ask that question. At one point in New York and New Jersey, 30% of the hotels were closed. And of those 30%, 95% of them were in major default on their loans and were essentially uh, basically bankrupt. And we're basically going to get foreclosed. Uh, a lot of deals were worked out with lenders. There are some hotels that are still closed, and they're using that time now to renovate. Others are now starting to open. So this is going to stabilize, but not until May or June of next year. We'll probably be back to the same numbers by May or June next year as the hotels get, that were closed either reopen with renovations, reopen with new management, or basically convert. But, but the number of rooms will still be out there. Okay. Uh, here's one from Scott. Do I think that the CDC will pause cruises in 2022 due to increased COVID cases? Uh, you know, Senator Blumenthal in Connecticut is actually causing is actually calling for the CDC to start banning cruises again. Uh, but based on the CDC's own protocols, there are no cruises that are in the red level yet based on reporting. So until you cross that threshold, I can't answer that question. But with the case numbers at 1%, uh, I don't think that's, that it's going to be a problem. I think the cruises will continue to sail. The regulations will be increased in terms of number of tests required and wearing masks on board everywhere other than in eating or in your cabin. But uh, the cruises will operate. Now, will they bypass some ports based on port, regula based on port regulations? That's already happening. The Queen Mary, too, just bypassed New York on its cruise. So uh, this, this will continue to happen. Uh, what do I know about Quebec shutting down for U.S. passengers? I don't, but we will check it out and we'll get you an answer next week. Uh, wonder, wonder, Sharon wants to know, wonder if we will be looking at a booster to the booster in a few months. What are you hearing? I think it's going to be the new kind of rap dance, booster to the booster. Yep, it's going to happen. Uh, uh, do I know any, Jeffrey wants to know, do I know anything about COVAC? Is it basically the same service as MedJet? Which trip insurance company would you recommend for travel to the Caribbean? Well, look, in the interest of full disclosure, I've had a MedJet Assist card for almost 25 years. I'll knock on wood. I've never had to use it, but I'm glad I have it. Uh, they're now offering uh, COVID-19 assistance as part of their coverage. COVAC is a relatively new company that's also offering the service. What you need to know is read the fine print on both policies, because there may be some age exclusions, some pre-existing exclusions, and some individual country and destination exclusions based on the severity of the cases in those countries but they both are good. Okay, uh, I'm booked online, this is from Richard. Uh, I'll answer that question already about your Galveston trip. And here's one from Michael. Would you ever wanna take a flight to space someday? Why or why not? Well, that's the easiest question to answer. Space, yes. Space adjacent, uh-uh. What you saw this year with Bezos and with Branson was space adjacent. I've said it before, the Russian monkey and Sputnik had a better deal. It was less expensive too. You know, for $250,000 minimum, they give you a nice little jumpsuit. You get up to like the boundary of space, you're waitless for 20 minutes and you land. And you think you're an astronaut? You have little wings? Hey, look, I applaud the opportunity for people to try it. I applaud the, uh, the initiative. I applaud the fact that this is a first step. But you know, if there's ever a lesson I learned from the movie Saving Private Ryan, it's this. Not a good idea to be in the first wave. I'm not saying you're going to die. Nobody died. But it's not the experience I want. I've flown to the border of space, basically. I did movies with the Air Force. We were up very, my pilot was Chuck Yeager, right? You know when that was? 1981. So I've had that experience. But you ask the question, do I want to go to space someday? You bet. But let's get down to a definition of space. So let's just hope that Virgin Galactic, 
and the Bezos projects and anything else, Blue Horizon, will actually lead to that. And when it gets there, count me in. All right, guys. Hey, a happier new year to everybody. Listen to our radio show this Saturday. Check your local stations. If you miss it, that's easy. Go to our website, petergreenberg.com. We stream it live starting at 10.05 a.m. Eastern. Fascinating conversations with two airline CEOs as we enter the brave new year. Again, you can watch our shows that are on PBS right now, Hidden Turkey, Hidden Poland. The Travel Detective Series starts again next year. And again, April 21st, mark your calendars. That's the premiere of Royal Tour Tanzania. Anthony Protus Chung doing the boards out in California on a rainy day in Monterey. Anthony, thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful holiday. Everybody else, please chill out, relax. Don't overthink travel. And I'll see you next year, which will, by the way, will be just a couple of days. Bye, everybody.